Tonight's show, we will continue a tour of the Yu Chan Mul Yash Cash Maya Museum with director Hugo Carrillo, assistant director Adriel Carrillo, and Pedro Carrillo. But first, we hear from our partners Shell Belize, BNE Charitable Trust, The Barry, and The National Gas Company. <music> the facilities at NGC have been engineered to the highest standards. No other LPG facility in this country has the technology, health and safety considerations, and accurate industry-accepted measurement technology as does NGC. Under the watchful eye of the control room, Bowsers are loaded with LPG to deliver to the two depots inland and to the many bulk storage facilities owned by customers all over the country, where the wholesale price is one single levelized national price. Now that NGC has entered the market, competition exists for the provision of LPG both at the wholesale level for acquisition and importation through a transparent tendering system and downstream by more than 30 retailers throughout the country. The National Gas Company of Belize, fueling Belize forward. R. D. Barry offering you great products, good service, and of course, the lowest prices in the entire country. Visit us in Belize City, Bermapan, San Ignacio Cayo, On Drug, and now in San Pedro, La Isla Bonita. D. Barry, get more, Belize. Since 2008, the Belize Natural Energy Charitable Trust has created opportunities for Belizeans to develop themselves and their communities. The Trust employs tools that are intuitive, collaborative, and accessible so that every Belizean is empowered to achieve their full potential. Over 200,000 Belizeans have been impacted because of our various initiatives. The Belize Natural Energy Charitable Trust empowering Belizeans of today to create the Belize of tomorrow. Shell V Power with three times more cleaning and friction reducing molecules. Go well, go Shell! Where did the legend of the cross come in, the Santa Cruz? That legend comes in in Felipe Cario Puerto. Uh -huh. Which was that is where the San Santa Cruz, San Santa Cruz. Of, of, of Balamna. Uh -huh. That is where they said that this cross is appeared, this talking cross. Talking cross uh -huh. But again, the talking cross is, um, so it, 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 it created like a religion which is not the religion like the, uh, say the, the Christian. Mm -hmm. No, uh, that cross was something that would lead them. And they still believe because in their church, we still have guards taking care of that cross. That particular cross? Yes. So that, that cross is still there? They have a cross at um, Felipe Cario Puerto. Se acuerda cuando fuimos? They still have it on their their on sanctuary. On the, on the guard. On the guard, but there are more than one, because they, they have have other crosses. Now there is one in Sochen, like it's a made of stone. So this this system here created an army, where you have the general, you have the batab. They have a hierarchy in their army of these Mayas, and then this talking cross said, you know what? They're going to lead them the way. Uh -huh. And people still believe 
on that cross. On the cross. So okay. they might think they might think that yes, that is a is is, is a something of a of a Christianity, uh, a, a per se a Catholic. No, they have their religion, they have their cross. They know what it means. It's totally different from other religions. Because well, I, kn I know the ones that escaped from Mexico and came to live in Belize, in villages like Shonosha and uh, all these villages, um, they brought crosses with them. Right. Right? Because I've seen a few of those crosses. Now talk to me about wha what, what's the difference between that Santa Cruz and, and, and the crosses that they would bring. Okay. Across. Since and during that time there was war, Everything that was from the Christianity or, or you know, from the Spanish their yes. doctrine had to be white yes, out. But uh, the Catholicism, right? yes, but again, the Spanish were doing the same thing. Mm -hmm. They burnt the books of the Maya. They burnt uh, many things from the Mayas. So they said that, you know, this cross also has to be destroyed. But no. That's why the Saibai tree, the Yashche, is tree of life for the Mayas. Say, we are going to multiply the crosses. And that's why you see that these crosses are painted green. Okay. And now here in our community, we have a cross. It's more than 100 years. And a statue about this big from La Virgen de Soledad. And that was brought during the Castle yes. War. And that was brought by Fernando Carrillo, who is his grandfather, mm -hmm. with, bueno. with Juan Cabanas. Juan Cabanas Carrillo and Cabanas are the only two families up to right now having up to seven generations living in this community. So they, they, they were really running away from the, from the war because it was, uh, uh, and, and so they found refuge in the British Honduras because as we said earlier, the, 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 the authorities here were giving the refugees a chance to stay, to stay. and populate the, the, the country, but at the same time, they were supplying weapons to the, to the Mayans. <laughs> they like a it, 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 many people have narrated to us, and one, for example, you have some of the military that never wanted to participate in that war. Okay. So what they did, they used to take off the uniform and put the clothing of the dead and go. Next, some people were maybe, uh, how can I say, uh, they changed their surnames from a Spanish to a Maya. Right? So all these things happen now. People were already in doctrine with Christianity. Yes, because Mayans were Give them yes, so, so, so this created this social, this, mm -hmm. this, this conflict. But nevertheless, the ones that were brought here, they were brought from Ikaiche. So I said that there was no division, but they were, they were believing in that cross, and they were very devoted to it. Mm -hmm. But now as Christianity, as time passes, you know, they don't continue their, their, their tradition. They don't continue their devotions. They don't continue it because I think that, um, like my dad says, some of them are ashamed of it. Yeah. But he can tell you that when that cross was brought, uh, you had people from different communities. When you heard other communities have the same crosses, the green crosses, mm -hmm. and um, there is a vast, a lot of people, and I, and I think, and I think that it's very important for us to know the meaning and differentiate the talking cross and Christianity. Christianity mm -hmm. yeah. um, who we have here? Who is, who is this? This is, um, this is Bernardino Ken. Bernardino Ken. Uh, he fought war, the same war. And he believed that he was shoes and he never lost a battle. Weapon, the machete. So many kilos, pounds, and that's how he used to slaughter the Spaniards. Mm -hmm. And now he 
he was killed. He was killed. He was on his skull. His skull is still in the museum of Teosuko. This, this painting here, or the picture you see, and, and I, I must mention, the pictures of Antonio, Cecilio, and Jacinto, and these ones, they are not the original pictures. What, what happened? In order to get uh, an idea how they used to look, to they collected pictures of the descendants of them, and that's how they came. They reconstructed it. Yeah. Yes. The same thing happened with him. Okay. They, they rescued his skull, and I, it was an anthropologist and that did his studies, and that's how they came that he used to look. This is his machete, no? <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, I think this, this, this empowers people. This, um, but uh, Mr. Ken, a descendant of Bernardino, is Mr. Ken, who was the... Jesus Ken. Jesus Ken, the... Um, the clerk of the National Assembly. Assembly, mm -hmm. right. Former clerk of the National and Assembly. My professor in economics, Ms. Crucita Ken, uh -huh. is also a descendant. Okay. You see? It's a small world, Belize. Yes. It's all Belize. And then Marcos Canul, which we spoke about. Uh, you can share Maya. And you have a whole timeline here of him. Mm -hmm. And I just read it to say, 1864, General Suk dies. 1864, Marcos Canul, named Commandante General of the Ikaishe. 1866, Marcos Canul raided a mahogany camp at Quam Hill on the Rio Bravo, demanding the company to settle rent payments. And that's, that's here in Belize, right? That's here in Belize, yes. Yeah. In 1866, a detachment was ambushed just before reaching the village of San Pedro. After a fight against Canul men, the British retreated. And San Pedro, we're talking about San Pedro in the, in the New River Lagoon wow. area, Yalbak. Yes in the Yalbak area. Um, in 1867, the British retaliated and burnt various Ikashe villages. They also angered Kanul. He raided Indian church. Yes, he did, and he burnt down the, the, the church. church. That, that, that's there. The, the remains are still there. Uh, yeah, and and that's a, that's a, that's a, that shows the resistance of the Maya. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then uh, demanded money for a year rent. These attacks struck fear into the colonial authorities and it is for this reason that the settlers in Belize city sought to become subjects of the British crown. Okay, and this are. is and this is when thing was it was getting more heated up uh -huh. because then they knew that Marcos Canul uh, is it, not to, to speak about the Ikaiche and the Crusob because they said that the Crusob were the Bravos, right? Mm -hmm. And then the Ikaiche were the Pacificos, but in our in in this part the, Ike, the Ikaiche Maya mm -hmm. is the one who fought, is the one who challenged, is the one who defeated the British, the British while the Krosov were treating mm -hmm. with the British. The British yeah. So uh, in 1870, um, Kanul. Kanul and his men marched into Corozal and occupied the tongue. So they occupied Cor uh, what Corozal, was Corozal yes. right? Then in 1872, the last raid in Orange Walk. That's when they attacked the fort and when he was wounded. That's why I said I only put last raid in Orange Walk because then comes history, comes the version of certain author, uh, international author, local author, so I put the raid, right? Mm -hmm. But even though, yes, that war, uh, that fight did occur. And here my dad, he can tell you, and that this it was not the road before. It had a diversion. And I had the opportunity to be with him, and he took me to what we call Agua Blanca, mm -hmm. and then Vaqueros, and Tasistal, and all those areas. So this is where it was the battleground and preparation for Marcos Canul. Marcos Canul came by a Gaspar Ridge pass Trinidad, San Lazaro, this was a battle, this, this was his area. And then I can, I can recall uh, Tatito Fran. When I inter interviewed Tatito Fran, mm -hmm. he said, yo soy orgulloso de Icaiche, mm -hmm. even though he was born here. Mm -hmm. And, and I, I want to emphasize something also that we, we are not supposed to put 
uh, a tag of who is Crusoe or who is Ikaiche. I think that leave it to other people. Yeah. Why? Because we are one nation, we are one culture, and then we keep dividing if we put tags to people. That's right. And here, they say, oh, you know what, the orange rock salt is mostly Ikaiche. No, because my dad can tell you that his grandmother, su esposa de Fernando Carrillo, vino de Carrillo Puerto. Mm -hmm. She was from Carrillo Puerto. So I, I, I think we have to be very careful with that. So and will it be wise then to say you're a Belizean of Maya extraction and that's it? I think you're a, a yeah, that could do, but I, I would put it like you're a Belizean Maya. A Belizean Maya, but first and foremost, you're a Belizean. Right. You're a Belizean first. Yes. And, 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 not, and, and then you're a Belizean, but of Maya descendants. Yes. Uh, regardless if you are Mopan or Quechi. Yeah. No, no, it's up to you if you want to go, oh, I am a Yucatec. I am Mopan. I am Quechi. Yeah, yeah, but, but, but the most important thing, you're a Belizean. 1875. British report a San Pedro Icaiche Alliance. That's the San Pedro in the Yalbac area. San Pedro Cities, yes. Mm -hmm. yes. San Pedro, not San Pedro and Burgess Key, but rather San Pedro Yalbac. Mm -hmm. And then in 1893 came the Mexico British Border Treaty. You want to talk about that transition there, how that related to 1875 and 1893? Yes. Um, if we go back to 1847, that's where the the but the, the the Caste War, the Maya Sucha War started. But the reason is, of the, of why were they fighting? They were being colonized. The women were brutally raped. Mm -hmm. The young men and the men and the elders, they were working long hours in the fields, mm -hmm. in, in the haciendas. Mm -hmm. They were taxed. The church system were taxing them. and a lot of the abuse was coming in, and it was time to put a stop to it. And what was happening in southern Yucatan also was happening here in this part of, of Campeche and also in this part of Belize. So credit is given to Marcos Canul, even though some people will allege they said that Marcos Canul was Belizean, or some people say it was Mexican. But I think that we need to give credit to Marcos Canul because he was the one who brought this resistance and he fought. And coming with these reeds, these attacks, he arrived by Yalbak. But in your mind, is he Belizean? I think that we, I, up to a certain extent, I can say. I am Marcos Canul. Uh -huh. that, that, that's what I, I, I thought you would say. You know, because it's the spirit of Marcos Canul. It doesn't matter who he was, it's the spirit and that freedom loving spirit of Marcos Canul that nobody had a chance with, you know, and you're the chance with. So um, I, we, we're going to show you that we, we, we're, not, we're not take no, you're not a chance exactly. with. And, this is a, and I, I, I can say that, you know what? I am Jacinto Pat. Yes. Because we must be careful. Everything happened in different periods of time. Yeah. But with the British, the alliance, remember now, San Pedro, Ceres, they okay, notice this is the next fraction. But then well, there was an alliance and the British were afraid that the San Pedro Mayas and the Ikaiche would come together and go against them. And this is where Milpas rocketed and we have testimonies from people who are in their descendants from San Pedro series and with this Mexico British oh you know what we're fighting we're defending we are creating a colony or you know I am Crusoe I am Ikaiche but people must know the El Porfiriato Porfirio Diaz and Porfirio Diaz was no one to be playing, and they said, you know, I'm going, and he participated also in this war. Mm -hmm. And this is where the treaties comes in. Mm -hmm. So when we hear, especially, and sometimes I like to ruin a joke with some people, when election time comes in in Belize, 
You know, it doesn't matter which party. It says, you know what? Guatemala will take Belize. You know what? Then afterwards, say, okay, if Guatemala takes Belize, Mexico will take its share. Come on. We need to go to our history. And there's this is in black and white. It is in the books of the Mexicans' authority. And they have never disputed it. They have always acknowledged it. And when we go to Tres Banderas, uh -huh. we can see the monument there. I've been there. All right. And then I think that this is what we need to teach our generations. That is so. That is so. It's very important to, to, to know that. You know, because the 1893 is when the Mexico-British border treaty was actually well, we formalized. And we are good neighbors with Mexico. Ex Mexico was the first country to recognize Belize's independence with all its territory intact because they respect that treaty and, and, and have never ever, as far as I know, disputed that treaty that was signed by General Porfirio Diaz. Porfirio Diaz and then right. a, a, good friend, a good friend of Belize was um, Lopez Portillo. Lopez Portillo, I remember President Lopez Portillo. Yes, that, that, that's the... Um, uh, so, Mr. René, I think that this is something that um, it, it, it was with great passion that we are sharing this yes, information. Because this, these are things we should be teaching. You know, we talk about different um, heroes and different uh, happenings in the country, but mm -hmm. there's more than one happening that make up Belize and make Belize what it is today. You know, so we got to find a way to blend all of this in and tell the great Belizean story, because we have a great story, all of us, you know. So it's this museum is doing its share. Like I mentioned, a vast research. Um, we even have some documents. We have old documents we from the on, British. I, I'm, I'm sure I'm going to come back again and go over, you, over those documents, because I would be very much interested in seeing that. I like history, you know, and I think we should be teaching our history, you know, in honesty. Now, who is that gentleman there? Maximo Perez, uh -huh. the last alcalde of Yalbac. Okay. In 2018, with my father, my mom, my brothers, and my collaborators, Adriel, my aunt, um, we said that every year we put a team. Oh. A team, for example, a team of one of the uh, festivals del pueblo, we put the Castawar, Guerra de Castas, the Mayan, um, the, the lady, the Mayan woman. Um, we put um, Voces del Pueblo, Testimonies of the, of the Elders. And in 2018 was um, Mayan Heroes. Mm -hmm. And on that day, we, here in our community, we, and we celebrate and we unveil this painting of Maximo Perez and the one with Bernardino Ken. Bernardino Ken. Now, Maximo Acarini was the last alcalde. So in 2018, we said, let's recognize, even though he was the one that they were pulled out, Famial back, um, and that's the one that were sent in the range walk on the camp, and this is the one that- Jose Palmar. Jose Palmar. And then we fast forward 2018, um, our good friend and collaborator, Yasser Musa, um, in collaboration with Ms. Eleanor Carrillo, they did a book of Maximo. Mm -hmm. Then fast forward, fast forward, we're seeing that these are the people who we need to recognize. Yeah. It's not only for one community, because even though majority of the population in Palmar, we have other people who came from that mm -hmm living in San Felipe, some of them in Agaspan Ridge, some of them even all over Belize. All over Belize. All over Belize. So I think uh, it, it is a great deed, and I must thank the family of Maximo Perez, because what we have down here is a treasure. This is an old treasure chest. That's, that used to belong for Maximo Perez. Oh, it's authentic? Yes. Wow. How did you get that? the top one. So, um, the granddaughter of Maximo was, you know, doing some cleaning and went to it. So, yeah. so, and they approach us, then they know that we are having a small museum. Mm -hmm. So this also give us that value added.
that we are doing slowly, but we want our people to know that, yes, we recognize people, and it's not only us, but all of us, we need to give them credit for what they do. I uh, see you have some exhibits. This is our Flying brush. Our people that they mm. came. Dígale que es este. Este es una antorcha, ¿no? Este es un ocote. Ocote. Sí. Palo pero de ocote. Este lo usaban para flash. Ah. La gente antigua. Mm. Lo, este te puede decir con ellos de acá Orange Rock no se apaga. You could run with this from here to mm. Orange Rock and it wouldn't, mm. it wouldn't, it wouldn't out. No. You know, it's, it's a burning stick. This. Um, you can, light, you can light your fire with this. Mm -hmm. You don't need to go buy kerosene. And um, for the festival, this was the, that one of the elders said, you know what, I want to give you this. We will have two of them. Mm -hmm. And we light it and it's still here. We, the, 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 we don't use that today. You know, we don't it's a good see. weapon. Yeah, because <laughs> it's heavy. <laughs> it's heavy. I'll knock you this and knock you out. Yes. A and good club, not true? Here we have, um, it's more recent now, these are the, the things that our yeah, grandfathers, our grandfathers um, have contributed to us. These were put there, Some of them Calabash. Have to to, uh, here. Yeah, we saw. still, we they have the saw, we have the, the chicle bag, uh -huh. we have the um, spurs. spurs. Uh, oh, this is for um, an abuelito, he used to, he told me the story that when he was um, on the Rio Hondo, mm -hmm. the river, and the British had asked him, are you Mexican or Belizean? And he said, I am me. Who are you to question me? Because this is my land. Mm -hmm. And he got arrested. <laughs> 25 whipping he got. Right. Just for saying that. <laughs> Just for saying that. Uh, and he said, you know what, I want you to give you this, and he gave me this. Mm. And um, he told me how his grandfather had fought in that war also. Some of them never, they didn't want to participate in that but war, they but they were forced yeah. to. And um, so I keep these treasures. These, I, I, each, each, um, has a history behind it. Now, this is the one. And I think people might I wonder. Will hat. But why do you have a wool hat hang up? At the moment, many people have been specialists in our Belizean economy. Many people have been predicting about inflation, about demand and supply, but little they know about this thing here. This was where, by an abuelo, more than 80 years old. 80 year old grandfather. Huh? Yes. And he used to put this and cut cane. And he said, I am proud. And I told him, abuelito, cuando usted muera, quiero que me regale esto. He me lo regaló. And he passed away. And he said, you know, this is his, his um, daughter, give it to me. This you use that to cut in the cane fields. Cane cut fields, cane. look. That's an old hat. Really. Old you know, hat. You, you look at it. It's dusty ashes yeah. and everything. And, but this is how hard our grandfathers have worked to maintain the sugar industry. One, this is how strong they were and they are at that age cutting cane. And those are the same ones, and my dad can tell you there's another story, that those are the same ones who stood up at that time at Tate and Lyle, Tate and Lyle. The Black Wednesday. Uh -huh. We have testimonies about these people participating in that riot. Yeah, right. Right. So, so this is why it is, this is important. Very important, yeah, very, very important that you explain that. You know, maybe you could put a, a sign under it or something that explains it properly. Yeah. When we come back, Adriel Carrillo will showcase some of his artwork. We take a break to hear from our partners. The B&E Charitable Trust, working in the development of Belize by inspiring young Belizean entrepreneurs to dream and to dream big. 
The National Gas Company, fueling Belize forward. The National Gas Company makes sure that you not only have a guaranteed supply of gas for every household need, but also that it is of the highest quality always. Shell Belize has been fueling Belize for many, many years, and they have done so reliably and with a lot of dependability. And the Bari stores in Belize City, Belmopan, San Ignacio, Orange Walk, and San Pedro, offering you much more for much less. The facilities at NGC have been engineered for the highest standards. No other LPG facility in this country has the technology, health and safety considerations, and accurate industry-accepted measurement technology as does NGC. Under the watchful eye of the control room, Bowsers are loaded with LPG to deliver to the two depots inland and to the many bulk storage facilities owned by customers all over the country, where the wholesale price is one single levelized national price. Now that NGC has entered the market, competition exists for the provision of LPG both at the wholesale level for acquisition and importation through a transparent tendering system and downstream by more than 30 retailers throughout the country. The National Gas Company of Belize, fueling Belize forward. We are the Barry, offering you great products, good service, and of course, the lowest prices in the entire country. Visit us in Belize City, Belmapan, San Ignacio Cayo, Orange and now in San Pedro, La Isla Bonita. The Barry. Get more feelings. Since 2008, the Belize Natural Energy Charitable Trust has created opportunities for Belizeans to develop themselves and their communities. The trust employs tools that are intuitive, collaborative, and accessible so that every Belizean is empowered to achieve their full potential. Over 200,000 Belizeans have been impacted because of our various initiatives. The Belize Natural Energy Charitable Trust, empowering Belizeans of today to create the Belize of tomorrow. Shell V Power, with three times more cleaning and friction reducing molecules. Go well, go Shell! You got a lot of stories, man. Um, this is a picture of San Lazaro, how it used to look before. Mm -hmm. This picture here is... John Price. And this is my grandfather. Oh, George Price and your grandfather, okay. And um, we have so many of them, so many of them. Oh, you got a lot of pictures. A lot of pictures. Yeah, some of these pictures here. We have a lot of pictures. Uh, like I say, we have, for example, this is my dad at the Museum of the Cost War, mm -hmm. and um, he's, um, this is the, these are um, British Honduras coins, mm -hmm. this one here, oh, see, that's the cross there, and um, there are different um, stories behind it. And this is a replica of where the cross, this is more or less the altar, how the cross, the cross is. Was. Yes. And then we have um, here, okay. um, this is at the outside of the church oh, in Teosuco. And this is uh, the consequences of, Fires. of the bombardment, bombardment of, the, uh, of the church. Yeah. So I think um, having this museum with other experiences in this area will create not just a touristic place, but it will create awareness, it will create education, okay. it will create identity mm -hmm. of our Belizean people. That is true. Uh, mm. To be in a museum is not only uh, for young people or elders, I think the most important thing is what we learn yeah. 
in a museum. That's right. Okay, um, this is the Winchesters from the British. The British that they used to give the Maya. Yes. Wow. So so they used to supply these. The British used to supply these to the Maya. And that's another one of Judge Price here. Yeah. I think that's as a Schumann. Judge Price did a lot to bring this whole thing together, right? Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. So we have, um, this is only, for example, what we want to do with our, with our young generations. Um, we have Judge Price, my grandfather there. Going here now, we have um, some of the modern tools, huh? Yeah, modern things here. Iron. It's British. Okay. This was um, by Indian Church, uh -huh. and this is a skill. A skill? Uh, yes, this is a skill. Oh, yeah. Very good. Mm -hmm. So I think I'm going to put it on the floor from them, yeah. It's a skill, and. Um, we have my. Dígale que Tatito era zapatero. Mi abuelo era un zapatero. Was a shoemaker. Hacía de todos zapatos, chanclas, shoes, moccasins. Todo hacía él. Thing that would go on your feet. Y él hacía sus mismos cueros para trabajar. He would make his same leather. He would turn his same leather. Sí, y entonces su cuñado de él, don Ángel Cabaña, era un zapatero también. Él hacía macasinos, zapatos, todo. But the law would do the same thing, yeah. Ellos son gente inteligente porque enseñaron a varias personas para que aprendan ese, sus oficios. Son grandes hombres, por eso yo quisiera que todo lo que estamos haciendo que el beliceño lo tenga. Everything that we are doing, we are doing it for Belize, and we want Belizeans to have it. Dígale, right. ¿quién fue Lázaro Perdomo? Who was Lázaro Perdomo? ¿Quién fue Lázaro Perdomo? Lázaro Perdomo, él vino de él, juntos con los, mi abuelo y todo. Okay, Lázaro Perdomo came over with his. Entonces, él, él llegó en Agua, en Agua Blanca, uh -huh. y se pasaron acá. They came over in Agua Blanca, came there. Y there. quedaron en San Luis. Went to St. Louis. Después de San Luis se vinieron aquí en en este lugar que era un rancho. Después cuando él se iba a morir, su, to to die, habló su mujer, dice, le dijo a su wife, mujer, búscame a Fernando Carrillo. They told his wife to look for Fernando Carrillo. Para que yo le deje mi testimonio so de que voy a testimony. dejar. Quiero dejar mi, mi nombre a este pueblo. Entonces, aquí era un rancho y él como, ranch. como se iba y se murió. Dying, entonces, él le, le dijo a mi, a mi abuelo, te voy a decir que le pongas aquí este, uh, este so lugar, San Lázaro. Saint Lázaro, San Lázaro. That's why the place is named San Lázaro. That's, what, that's how the place got its name. Así vino el nombre de aquí donde yo vivo. Okay, that's how the place where I live got its name, San Lázaro. So, okay. Tiene historia, mucho. Uh -huh, claro. ¿Por qué? Porque ellos fueron de aquí. Because they were from here. Mm -hmm. And so his great, his grandfather was played a role in the name of, naming of the village of yes. San Lázaro. Uh, this is how our community got its name. Uh, during the war, they came, and then as a words, just on the outskirts of the village right now, it was called um, San Luis. But then afterwards, they moved in more here, and that's what you call El Rancho. Mm -hmm. oh, where are you going? El Rancho. But then, as he explained that Lazaro was ill, so he called his grandfather, Fernando Carrillo, and said, you know, I want you to name, name this place under, okay, yes, San Lazaro. And he was a businessman. He had the trapiche. Uh -huh. He used to sell the panela. He used to make the um, liquor. Yeah. And then... Um, trapiche was a mill, right? It was a mill. And that's how people here, and there are still some of the, um, the remains of the mill. 
So um, that uh, and other industries were were being um, were in the community besides the milpa. We had people doing the forestry. We had the chicle, and we even had the people doing the eneken, the agave. Yeah. And we have also. That's he he does the eneken also. Okay, that's the the vine, no? The that was the um, green oh, gold they used to, they used in Yucatan, rope, yes. They used that to do rope. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yes, yeah. and um, he, does, he does also the processing of it. Okay, so he processes Heineken as well. Heineken, Heineken, Heineken. I don't know if Heineken is a name for that, but um, Heineken. Un tío, un tío que se llamaba Pablo Cal. Uh. Él raspaba el Heineken, hacía su soga, porque ese tiempo no había soga. You have to use a henequin for rope. Mm -hmm. Because they had rope, so the rope, the rope really is made from that. Vendía la soga, la libra de soga a 25 centavos la libra. 25 cents a pong. Those were the days. Yes. Ese tiempo. Pero ellos ya se fueron, fueron a, ya descansaron. Ya se fueron de ese mundo, ya se fueron, ya se murieron. Ya se murieron. Sí. Instruments, yeah, this is a turtle shell, right? Yes. So the shell, the uh, shell band. This is. This is a, a little drum here, and this drum here, again, the it's a Mayan it's drum. This is made out of goat skin. Oh, goat skin. And this is a leg, oh. or the calabash. Calabash and goat skin. Yes. Okay, so goat skin string or calabash. Yes. And this. This is the tunkul. Tunkul. Hispanic instruments of the Maya. What, what was this used for? Uh, Pre-Hispanic music, this one here, and some people use it when they're doing their rituals or um, what you call a religious activities. Uh, so they used to play this one here, okay. the Tunkul. But no, it depends on the occasion and the beat uh -huh. also. You could and do a beat on it? Um, Adriel can do the beats. Adriel? Adriel? Consuel right. assisting man. Uh, Let, let's see how this, how, this, how this work. Depending on the type of wood also, it will give you another beat. Okay. okay. So for their ceremonial, it was going to, it was used. Okay. And um, don't be wrong because the shells, for example, there is a Mayan, a Mayan temple right on the, on the Caribbean Sea, wow. which went in Tulum. Mayas used turtles. Yeah. I think Arifuna used the turtle shell band as well. Exactly. Yeah. And the, also the shell. Yeah. So I they use the shell as use well. Use the right? shell as well. So I think that this is uh, something that these things unite us, especially here in Belize. Cultures are so close to each other. You know? So I, uh, this, um, we are, we are, and these are, um, these are pieces that have been made by our, our own people also here. Mm -hmm. um, for example, this, you have, this is one sound. Now, if I would bring this more lower, Richer, yeah, it's, it's richer, far richer. So I could uh, through that. And I think that um, these are these are very important pieces, and each instrument also plays a role in the in the in the culture. And um, people use it. For example, this is for the pre-Hispanic, and then what we have is the Maya Pash, mm -hmm. which is the violin, and then they have the uh, the little drum. That is what we call the Maya Pash, all right? So it depends. Like I said, things happen at different periods of time. Mm -hmm. And we cannot be stuck in just one period of time. Right. We have to know, we have to move on. Mm -hmm. And I know that many people, for example, they're using this now in, in very uh, touristic places. Mm -hmm. People want to know what's, what the tunkul is. Mm -hmm. But then we have secret places where they are played. Some, some of them are played in the cenotes. 
some of them being played in the different parts of the um, when they're doing their 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 um, offerings. Mm -hmm. So it's not just the shell. Mm -hmm. We have the tungkul. We have the um, we have the big drums also. So it. We can see that the instruments of the Maya, instruments of the Garifuna, instruments of um, there were a lot of similarity. A lot of similarity. Yes. Yeah, mm -hmm. So let, let, let's let's Adriel is a man that just said that we played. Adriel. Adriel, Adriel. Call him here. Give it a stick, and you do your thing, man. Make us see what make us see what 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 you play for. What's the symbolism behind what you play just now? Okay, that the one here that he does when the people are entering a certain place. Okay. All right. So the idea here is we will have one at our entrance. So this is the one sending the message, mm -hmm. or we're communicating with our sisters. Mm -hmm. Just like, for example, the shell. The shell. You can put the shell to Adriel. <laughs> the shell. Uh, my dad can tell you that before they, when they are going to call the fajina, That's what they use, that yeah. was they used to blue, uh -huh. and all the community used to come together, and they do the fajina as if they work as a community, that's right. and that's what you call them. Mm -hmm. Sometimes people, when they were going hunting, use the they use the shell. Uh -huh. Patricio Mendes, mm -hmm. he was one of the, he used this to call the community to do the fajina here. Again, nobody use it. Mm -hmm. Fajina feed a wee, mm -hmm. or is feeding a wee. So I think that it's time. Bring back some of this culture, man. Exactly. <laughs> Bring back some of this culture. But Adriel, come on, um, no, you, you, you're going yeah. far from me just now. Um, we need, we, um, you, what you did just now was a uh, welcome, right? Now, if somebody was going to be socializing or, or, or something like that, what would, what would they, this, this song like? Yeah, I'll go something faster, it would just be a faster beat, what would it be? Well, it depends um, on the occasion, uh -huh. because there's certain type of beats that, that goes with, um, for example, ceremonies, they use another type of beat. Uh, I just know the, the welcoming beat, so uh -huh. I only can give reference oh, in okay. that. <laughs> no, so. but yeah, but ceremonial beat would be maybe uh, yeah. faster, right? Yeah. Faster. Well, more faster and um, more deeper tunes. Okay. Yeah, like for example, using the drums there, there's when it comes into play turtle shells and all the different in instrument okay. of the Maya. No, um, you, I, I know you did that, mm -hmm. yes. this work here, right? Because um, Ugo told me that this is your work. So since I have you here with me right now, and uh, just explain to me what I'm seeing here. Let me, let me get over here so you okay. can look at it better. Well, the first big stone there is the Lord Smoking Shell. Mm -hmm. You can find that in Stella 9 in Lamanai. So um, it, he's the youngest of four um, children, which was one of the leaders of Lamanai. Mm. So um, going mo more into detail, but I'm just going to give you a quick um, rundown of this guy, is that um, he has a jester god in the part where you see uh, mm -hmm. the... the, the Flame. That's supposed to be the flame, but it's actually a jester god. Jester gods can be um, depicted in three types of animal: fish, bird, or a deer. And um, as well, he has another jester god at the top, which is a bird. Point, point to the jester god. Now the jester god is supposed to be this one here, but like. Like I said, mm -hmm. it is not in detail, mm -hmm. but it's comprised of a jester god. Um, that you can find it in, in Lamanai, Stella mm -hmm. 9 in Lamanai. Uh, the one at the middle, um, that's Kinich Ahau. 
he the famous kine chahao that he was found at altunha right so um the famous jet head then the other one is that's a painting of mr marvin mesa he did he did that one there the, um he what he did there is the yumkash again he's the mayan god of corn and as well wild vegetation and you you put that on stone though right or, or he gave or that was his work the stone it was found here, here. and um oh. it was given to him to be painted Oh, okay. So it's a stone from out, out here. That stone, that stone there, um, it was found by my mom right at the doorstep of our house. Mm -hmm. This one here, okay. and um, this this is what I, I mentioned. It gives you, uh, it gives us that that sense of identity, because if um, you allow us, Adriel has more of his art that he does with culture. But down there, we're building a small plaza. And leveling the ground, we have found obsidian. Okay, imagine, a lot of obsidian will be here indeed. Let's, let, let's go to the outside now, and then uh, yeah. as we do our wrap up. So before we leave, we'll stop off at Adriel Plaza. Adriel, um, explain your plaza to me. What, what, am I, what all am I seeing here? And uh, were you the one who did all this work? No, the plaza is down there. This is the um, part where I do my my art. As you can see, you, you, you have the plaza will be what the, the digging down there. Yeah, the plaza is that big dug out there, and this is my art. And this is your art. Yeah. So this wouldn't this be similar to being on top of a Mayan temple? Um, you know. Well, that's the plan. That's okay. the plan. Um, keeping it um shaped like a Mayan temple. Mm. So and up here is where I'm displaying my art. Okay, <laughs> well, tell me about your art then. Well, um, I have the, um, I do um, clay. This is the clay here. And I just, and as well the stone painting. This is again the, the lower smoking shell. And um, from wood burning, again I have the jade head. Mm. And um, painting as well. So can I, can I look at this closer? So you you, you 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 burn this in? You are physically like burn? Yes, it's literally burned. And so this won't feed at all. Is this? No, that's not feed. Um, this is how it's supposed to look like. Oh, this is the finished product here. Yeah. Okay, so this won't feed at all, regardless of what, what, what I do. It won't feed at all. Mm -hmm. yeah. Even with time. And then what I do is just recycle the. the That's what from I the noticed. Can. The, 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 the hook of a beer can. To hang on your wall. You wall, can yeah. hang it wherever you want. Uh -huh. That's and as well I use magnets. Uh -huh. So this is for your fridge. Okay. Just to put it in your mag um, your fridge. And, fridge. and as well I do have. Um, key rings, huh? Key holders, chain rings. Uh -huh. um, from all the national symbols and. Coasters out of leather. Uh -huh. So you you and you do all this yourself, right? This you one. Somebody this, help you. this one here is done by by another person in here in the village of Agasmai Ridge. So we just we um, they're uh, artisans as well. So we uh, just how you sell? How you sell? Uh, where you sell? Uh, you sell those? You sell these? What you're seeing here, yes, the, those are for sale, and then the money we we um get. We um we will reuse it here at the museum. Uh, we want to build a uh, hopefully a gift shop so we can have all this stuff inside. And all locally made. Yes. And I noticed this love. Yeah, those are the um, little bugs out of um, fabric blanket, fabric. Known, as, known, as, known as manta. Okay, manta. Okay, yeah, manta. Yeah. And then the painting that's um fabric painting so that we won't feed away as well. That's the paint for fabric. And how much of one of these would sell for? Ten dollars. Ten dollars? dollars, yes. Ten Belize dollars? Okay. And and the, the, these would go for? This one, oh. the, the wood burn one, they are ten. Ten dollars. Yeah. So uh, roughly everything is around ten dollars. Around ten dollars. Well, it's a lot of work for ten dollars. And what about this beauty here? Well, that one, that 
Well, that would cost a little bit more because of, of the um, the time. Uh -huh. And when it comes to 3D, like the like the Kinecha, how well it's definitely more definitely more uh -huh. time. Yes, for sure. So, if somebody wants to learn to do wood burning, would you teach her? Well, um, if there's um, the to way do, how to do I the carving, how you uh, do? How, how I can give classes? Well, sure. You would, right? All right. Well, let me congratulate you for this and thank you for sharing it with me. Thank you very much as well. Uh, we will be back with more of the attractions of the Yucha and Mol Yashkash Maya Museum after this break. The facilities at NGC have been engineered to the highest standards. No other LPG facility in this country has the technology, health and safety considerations and accurate industry accepted measurement technology as does NGC. Under the watchful eye of the control room, Bowsers are loaded with LPG to deliver to the two depots inland and to the many bulk storage facilities owned by customers all over the country, where the wholesale price is one single levelized national price. Now that NGC has entered the market, competition exists for the provision of LPG both at the wholesale level for acquisition and importation through a transparent tendering system and downstream by more than 30 retailers throughout the country. The National Gas Company of Belize, fueling Belize forward. We are the Barry, offering you great products, good service, and of course, the lowest prices in the entire country. Visit us in Belize City, Belmapan, San Ignacio Cayo, Orlyot, and now in San Pedro, La Isla Bonita. The Barry. Get more pieces. Since 2008, the Belize Natural Energy Charitable Trust has created opportunities for Belizeans to develop themselves and their communities. The Trust employs tools that are intuitive, collaborative, and accessible so that every Belizean is empowered to achieve their full potential. Over 200,000 Belizeans have been impacted because of our various initiatives. The Belize Natural Energy Charitable Trust, empowering Belizeans of today to create the Belize of tomorrow. Shell V Power, with three times more cleaning and friction reducing molecules. Go well, go Shell. Well, Ugo Rene, we are in your backyard, right? And with your dad. Yes. And you told me earlier on that your dad uh, make um, string. You call it, what do you call it? Uh, is the string, mecate, so skill that comes out from the agave, the Heineken tree. The Heineken tree. Mm -hmm. And this Heineken tree produces the matting that this is made. We go to the shop and we buy this. Let me pull it out here just so we could know what we're talking about. This ball of string, you go to a store and you see it there. Yes. But many times they don't realize that it's made from a plant. From a plant. Mm -hmm. And this takes a process. Mm -hmm. And behind this string, there is a lot of social and economical factors. Mm -hmm. And if we go to the history itself, um, the agave or the henniken, the soskil, that was an industry in the southern peninsula of Yuc the Yucatan. Mm -hmm. It was called the Green Gold. Okay. And the, at that time, during the Maya Social War, the Caste War, the people who were working in the haciendas, mm -hmm. um, they were, I would say, they were in the slavery system. Mm -hmm. They had to work long hours in the hacienda system, the caste mm -hmm. system. They had to work long hours, and this was one of the of the things that they had to do. Long hours in the field, cutting these leaves. If you would look at the leaf there, it's very sharp, it's very pointed. Well, yeah. And um, 
one mistake, and you can put your, your, yes, eyes, your eyes. Anything, you know, anything. Uh, yeah, it punctures you basically. Right, and then this is, they had to do long hours, and this green gold that was exported to Europe, mm -hmm. Spain, and this is what the people had to do. Long hours. Cut it and it was made into string, string. there and then sent back to us as a string. Right. And right. Uh, my dad here, usually what it takes, uh, we have um, as part of the museum to show you guys is the, the agave tree. Uh -huh. And my dad, dad will, he will show you. Uh, just be careful because these are sharp. These are very, very sharp. Yeah. Um, he will cut one of the leaves. Corte ese. Oh, you can cut this. Uh -huh. uh, but you also from this plant you get things um, like um, uh, tequila, mezcal, tequila, and, mezcal, and made some varieties of agave, right? Yes, um, there are different species. They have some wild ones that we can still find here in Belize. Uh -huh. um, but unfortunately, it has deforestation. We have end up with this. Yeah. Um, Next thing, it was prosperous in Yucatan. Uh -huh. And since it was prosperous in Yucatan, they tried to bring it right across also to Belize. When they uh, run away from the guerra. Yes, uh, but some companies wanted to introduce this same industry, but it wasn't prosperous. Mm. It wasn't worth when profitable, it wasn't worth it. And then afterwards, at that time, Belize was also going through some different changes mm -hmm. and they had introduced for example, the um, the sugar. Mm -hmm. So they stayed right away. And that industry went down um, in Yucatan, especially during the World War. Yeah. So that, but no, it's something, it has value. The work itself, and you can, now you can make some other different products, which is expensive. And this, this here, uh, like I say, in different parts of Belize here in the north, we have a lot of them. And, and as a sweetener, uh, it substitutes sugar in, 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 some, in some instances, right? Because it's also a sweetener, is it? Um, they don't not use this kind here, yeah. but, that, but one of the varieties I know is sold as syrup and, and uh, they make syrup and sweeteners out of it, right? Also, like I said, the tequila and the mezcal, the mezcal. And, and all those, those, those things. Just like how you, the sweetness of the sugar cane makes the rum, the sweetness of the agave plant makes the mezcal and the tequila mm -hmm. and also the syrup that, that we're talking about. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so it could have been an e easily be an industry that would compete with the sugar cane industry, wouldn't it? And I think that it, it it can still be, but you look at the big industries across Mexico, just tequila. Um, they export tequila yeah. worldwide. Yeah. And, um, but like I said, uh, the people that were introduced in the, to the cane industry, and, um, but we can di diversify. But here in the museum, it plays an important role because um, it, teach, it teaches us the history of what our ancestors went through yeah. and I think because of that being on this caste hacienda system mm -hmm. the caste system they retaliated and now I think the hard work teaches people to come out to survive but again you can be a businessman so here in the museum we showcase the process of doing the string well, how is it planted let's start there okay this is easily for example here the tree um, from a stem like this now, yeah. yes for example this tree the the um the root will give me another tree okay so it's you just cut that and then you go ahead you plant it here we have about three four four different varieties mm -hmm. but this is the one that we mostly use yes. okay. so it's easy and um it doesn't need much of to be to take care it is this is uh it's hard yes mm -hmm. so uh the next process the next step what my dad will do um is um he will show us how he gets what we call the so skill so skill this, so skill. this, this, this is a little the fiber, point, the fiber, fiber. here the fiber that, that makes up this the string. this string that i have here mm -hmm. so this fiber basically is interwoven 
like this and make up this string right. that's almost mm -hmm. hard, too hard to, to burst. <laughs> you just can't pull it apart. Dígale, aquí se hacía esto en San Lázaro. Okay. Mr. René, este yo miré cuando mi familia sembraba de esta. Lo cultivaba, ¿por qué? Porque había un señor que es mi tío, Pablo Cal, él hacía soga. Que no so he's made rope, so he has seen this and family was growing up. Y antes no había dinero y él lo vendía a 1.25 la libra. There was no money at that time and it was sold at 1.25 a pound. Mm -hmm. A la gente de aquí de San Lázaro, mm -hmm. pero ya no hay la gente de lo que los que compraban. Mm -hmm. Todos ya se fueron, se fueron, pa fallecieron. They are no longer around those that would buy that, so they, 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 they um, passed away. And um, after uh, the industry went down, new products come in. The plastic comes in, and uh, the people they decided it is not worthwhile to do it. Yeah. But um, my dad will show you the. But the, the string we import, the string now. We import now. Uh, you you that. pay you pay the <laughs> minimum seventeen dollars for a small roll of the uh, string. Of the string, and, and, and it's made from this stuff right here. Okay, let's let's see let's see let your dad show us how how you go about doing this then. Uh -huh. And I will help him to cut this. So you cut off the point basically. Yeah, just cut off the point, and then he will take over. Okay, Aporello. dad. Then you explain to me what he's doing while he's yeah. doing it. Aporello, yeah. This usually. Um, okay. Let's come. Let's come. Okay. So what he's doing, he is just beating. The fiber, you have to release all of the green so that it stays soft. All the water will drain mm. because after he does this, he has to scrape. When he scrapes it, the green will come off and then we'll have the fiber, the what we call the soskill. Then after doing that, we have to put it to dry. Okay. When it's dried, afterwards, we can start doing the, the um, making the, the piece of, of the ropes. So this one. He has beaten this field. Yes. And you can see this. You can see it here. Yeah. It's starting to come out. Uh -huh. Like I said, this leaf here is um, pretty young, but it can still do the job. Okay. okay. So you have to continue beating this or this is beaten enough? Uh, I think a little bit more. Dele este aquí. And you imagine you're doing this all, all day. day. All day, and you look at your back, at your feet, because... And you're trying to speak to each other, throw it one side, and somebody else pick it up. Yes, but after he goes, see, it's wet. It's still wet, yeah. It's still wet. Uh -huh. And um, so, uh, what... You can use a, a piece of board, or you can use, like, this stand uh -huh. here. Um, I want to... Okay, so what we do here... Okay. So, because um, this, uh -huh. what, what, what is it? Uh, so you don't have to put it, uh, you don't have to lean against it, okay. or it will stay in you or whatever, but you it know, stays? just, yes, it, 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 like just green, but it comes off pretty easy. Okay. So once he has done that, he clamps it here, and then with this piece of, some people use a machete. Uh -huh. um, but this is just a piece of a wood, wood uh -huh. and it will do the job nice and neat. Okay? See it? You can Taking off the green. Okay. Yes. Dele desde acá arriba. Okay? And he, he, he has a technique also because. You don't want to be scraping it off and just like uh, if you're using a machete or something and you're cutting it. You're cutting it. Exactly. You apply pressure but not much. Okay. Now if you see this now, we are getting it more to uh -huh. this the the pieces of fiber, see? Yes, yeah, there you're seeing it. Yeah, the, 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 like what you showed me a while mm -hmm. ago. There there it is. Right. So this has to dry in the sun, you say, for a while. Once this 
this process is finished with this leaf here. Here is what comes out. Uh, How do you join it together? Pardon? How do you join it together to make a continuous piece of string? Okay, um, right here, okay. this is just part of it, see? Mm -hmm. Now, after we have done this, you will have like a good bale of it, of only this. Mm -hmm. It's all entwined together. Then he starts. He sits or he stands up and then he starts to do like the plaiting oh. and you will get something like this. So you do, you do a continuous plait. So when, when you finish out here, they just put another piece and plait it in again. Yes, it just con you will have a, a bale of it like uh -huh. this, a big pile of it. And you just go, it will, it will, it will tie it by itself. So it, 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 it joins, to it joins easily. So it rejoins itself. So you put another piece on it, then yes. it will clip like quick mountain. And it just going. And it becomes almost unbreakable. You have to cut it with a scissors. You or have to cut it. For example, yeah. this was done, and we left it there. See, but this um, we have to dry it first. Yeah. This was just like this. But we, if we dry it, you can't. You can't beat you it. You can't beat it. Yeah. So my dad can. Um, haga este, haga como que está haciendo el mecate de este pedacito ya. Um, now it depends. Now some people would just use their hand. Okay, okay, his leg. Okay, that's how he's making sure that the fibers together they will come in along, and then I will be on the other side. And then I, with the big pile of the of the soskil and he just continue. I go releasing it uh -huh. until we get, so we get long the long paper. string. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. And um, now it depends now also the thickness of the rope that you want to do. Uh -huh. And for example, this you don't need much, but then afterwards, if you want to do thicker ropes, which are there thicker rope yeah. you can do. And it will take more time. And you want to do a bag like this? Uh, no. A bag like this? People are doing bags. They are plaiting it. They are doing bags. They are different doing other products. And um, these are handmade bags. And I think that some people at the moment they are producing. So what we are doing here at the museum is teaching the history of it, mm. the process how to do it. And then our next step is for artisans to start doing these products here. So, and, and it takes a wise person, it takes somebody who has the experience, dedication, and I think the interest of the youth learning this, it teaches them. So it, it, it is, uh, it's, it's interesting to them because afterwards they learn a little bit of the history, a little bit of the industry, and they themselves can do a small little, um, a small business. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that, that, that's... It's more or less, see? Well, it, it, it ends up looking like this. And this, was, this was made just now, see? Just now, yes. This was made just now, so there we go. Yeah, there we make the comparison okay. right here. Mm -hmm. Right? So this was made right in front of us. Wow. Okay. Interesting. I'm okay, try my thing, you know. Hmm? I'll cut my piece out. Okay, away. okay, Mr. Rene. Are you ready, next one? Okay. So, so I will cut my piece out, and then okay. I'll, I'll see. Sure. Then, Mr. Career one, teach me where for do. Celebration time. It don't matter what part of the jewel they come from. You da you and me da me. But guess what? All are we the one. Okay, how did I do? Excellent. 10 out uh -huh. of 10. So serious? Yes. Now, one, one step left. Uh -huh. After this, and um, we need to find and market this. That will oh, be yeah. the 11 over 10. Okay. 
I think market this, I'll, I'll sell maybe Chris the cameraman will buy I think that um, this is something very good that uh, we, we can we can sell and I think uh, diversification and these are the things that history teaches us yeah. mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. this uh, you did good, excellent, because mm. you did it two sides, and you never get, you never cut the fiber. Yes, it's all yes. right. It's still there. So when when you finish this, you get a whole bale of it. Mm -hmm. All right, and then there's another process where you have to like, you can even select the stronger ones. Mm -hmm. All right, after it's dried, you can select the stronger pieces and make stronger ropes, and okay. this is how we get that. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we have all of this stuff here that we just go to the store and buy <laughs> and can be made right in your own backyard, your own backyard. if you know what you're doing, yes. right? Mm -hmm. wow. So we stop importing things that we can do it. Uh -huh. We can do it ourselves. We can do it ourselves. And like I mentioned, this is part of, the, of the, our museum and we teach them the history about this, the Henneken, the Agave, the Soskil, and about the Maya social war, the process of elaborating this and um, I think that this is something very important and the same way how we can teach our our generations doing a milpa system how we can teach our 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 young generations of the of the fields the different tomatoes mm -hmm. the cane the even the tobacco mm -hmm. uh, it has a process but you must have this passion for it mm -hmm. and go because you just won't plant just for planting. You know what you're doing. You need to, to study the history behind it also. Right. We need to prepare our Belizeans yeah. in, a, in, a, in, a, in a good manner. And none of the tools imported? None. Backyard tools? Backyard tools. This is right by our um, <laughs> ranch. <laughs> right. This is right here. And, and, and look at the stick. The stick played its role. Mm -hmm. right. All right. I look forward to coming back again. And, talk, and talking with, with, with you as a, as a family, and um, look at, and then maybe move around some other areas here in, in, in San Lazaro, a very interesting village in the Orange Walk district. Quiero agradecerle, joven, señor, por su amabilidad de tenerme aquí con usted. Igualmente, para todos está bueno. Una vez que tenemos salud, en que no haya dinero, pero estamos bien con salud. Once we are healthy, we are okay. And, uh, we don't need the money, but we need the health more than the money. Igualmente. Gracias. And yes. I want to wish you the best. Keep on, keep on studying your history. Keep on portraying your history, and keep on moving forward um, as a proud Belizean. Yes, um, and um, we hope that we finish what we're doing here. Uh, we have still more things to do. Interesting um, history, but. Um, I thank you as well for giving me the opportunity to display my art that I have here in the museum. Thank you, thank you for sharing thank it. Saludos a todos su radio. Usted puede hacer el saludo ahorita, diga, saludos a todos los que me escuchan. Le mando saludos a todos mis amigas de que trabajan con mi amigo René. A todos beliceños. All right. Yo, para servir a ustedes, yo me llamo Pedro Carrillo. Soy de San Lázaro. Soy orgulloso porque soy beliceño. Bueno, muy orgulloso de ser beliceño. Igualmente aquí, don Felipe. Y vamos a darle la mano aquí al amigo. Thank you so much, my brother. Any final word before we leave? Because I know we're coming back. So this won't be your last word and your last time. Well, once more, thank you for your visit. We're looking forward. Esta es su casa. This is home. Me siento en casa. <laughs> One, two, and we are sure you, we're going to host you and we're going to share more of our history. And thirdly, we're looking forward for the completion and inauguration of the first Maya Museum, which will highlight the history of the Castawar and the history of the communities here in Orange Walk. Yes. I like it. All the communities in our region. And maybe one day we could do a tour of, of these communities one by one, you know, and, and get to know them um, better. Yes, and um, I would like to thank um, your team and to all your viewers. And feel free anytime you want to come and visit us, we welcome you. And like I said, a museum is not just four walls, a museum 
we help, we share our information, and most important, we need to rescue and preserve our culture as well as Mother Earth and our country beliefs. And it's all a labor of love. So as a labor of love, we say thanks for choosing love. Belize Watch, knowledge of the past, impacting the present, building the future. Celebration time. It don't matter what part of the jewelry come from. You that you 